Rock music used to be pop music. Bands like The Beatles, Led Zeppelin, Eagles, Fleetwood Mac, Dire Straits, Bon Jovi. Bands like these had the biggest selling albums of the year. They weren't just the biggest rock stars in the world, they were the biggest pop stars. But today, rock music barely even reaches into the top 40. We still have massive rock bands like Foo Fighters or Arctic Monkeys, but these bands are from a previous era. And you do get new rock acts arrive, like Royal Blood, Blossoms or Catfish and the Bottle Men. And yes, they do get number one albums, but their successes are nowhere near the same level of magnitude as the rock bands of the past. So I wanted to work out when exactly rock music disappeared from the charts, and then maybe that would help me work out why. So what I did was I made a spreadsheet. I decided to look at the top selling albums from each year from 1960 to 2017. I looked at the top 10 best selling albums of each year in the UK, and I looked at the top five from the US. So I went through each year and put the top selling albums into my spreadsheet. Then I went through and listened briefly to every single album there to work out whether it was rock music or not. And this is when I hit my first problem. Wait a minute, this sounds like rock and or roll. What is rock music? Genres are notoriously hard to define and their definitions evolve over time. So what I did is I focused on the one element of rock music that I think everybody hears and instantly thinks of rock. Distorted electric guitar. So in the end, this is the definition I came up with for what a rock album is. An album where four or more tracks feature prominent distorted electric guitar. So, going back to my spreadsheet, I was able to go through every album and mark down whether it was rock music or not. And then that allowed me to come up with a percentage of each year, 1960 to 2017, of how much rock music had been in the end of year album charts. And once I had a percentage for every single year, I was able to plot them onto this graph. So, just to explain the graph, I have the years along the x-axis at the bottom, and the percentage of end of year albums that were rock albums up the y-axis. And you can already see at a glance the general shape that I was anticipating, a peak of rock music in the 60s and 70s with a slow decline up to the modern day. But let's look more closely. As you might expect, the 60s really kicks rock into gear. In 1964, for example, four of the biggest selling albums in the UK were by the Beatles. And by 1970, rock is really dominating with bands like Led Zeppelin, Chicago, Santana, Deep Purple, all having massive selling albums. But if we move along to the 1980s, as many of you would have predicted, we see our first major dip in rock music. 1984 in particular, it reaches a real low. And when you look at the bands that were topping the charts that year, you get an idea to why. Wham, Frankie Goes to Hollywood, Culture Club. These are all bands who use one particular thing. Synthesizers. Synths have been around for a long time now, at least from the 1960s, but it was the 1980s when they finally got adopted fully into pop music and started taking on the roles that were traditionally filled by guitars. So the rhythm roles, playing the chords, playing lead melodies, these roles fell to synths instead of guitars and started making the music less rocky. But that is certainly not to say that the 1980s didn't have its own rock music. 1985, for example, we have Dire Straits, Bruce Springsteen and Brian Adams. But as we go forward into the 90s, you can see that it's still dropping. We do get a resurgence in 92, 93 with bands like Nirvana in America. And in the UK, Britpop arrives around 95 with bands like Oasis, Blur and Pulp. But then we reach the year 2000, and the second the great nail in the coffin arrives for rock music. In the year 2000, when Eminem gained major mainstream success, it opened the floodgates for rap music being in the charts. It was now acceptable to have rap music on the radio, or rap music integrated into other styles, and as of 2017, it's one of the most integral styles in the charts. But even in the 2000s, rock isn't dead yet. 2006, we see indie rock arrive with bands like Arctic Monkeys, Kooks, Razorlight, and in the US, they have Nickelback, if you can count them. And over the next few years, we still get some really big rock albums. 2007, we have Kaiser Chiefs. 2008, we have Killers. 2009, we have The Kings of Leon. And then, we reach the year 2010. And this appears to be the year that rock stopped being pop. The year that the biggest new rock act on the scene 
was Mumford and Sons. Now, what I think has happened here is something that has been happening ever since Britpop, and it's something I would loosely call the Coldplay effect. Since the mid-90s, it became more and more common for rock bands to swap their electric guitars for acoustic guitars. Bands like Coldplay, Travis and Snow Patrol took what we knew as rock music, but focused more on the acoustic elements, on the more sombre elements, and ultimately made the music less aggressive and less rocky. Anyway, back to the graph. 2011 and 2012, we see no rock albums in the end of year charts. And this is the first time this has happened since the 1950s. 2013, the Arctic Monkeys come out with AM, but as I've mentioned before, they were already an established rock band. We had no new rock bands coming through. 2014, we have Pink Floyd. 2015, we've got nothing. And 2016, we have got two rock albums, and they're both by David Bowie. But if it really takes the death of David Bowie to get rock music back into the charts, I think we've got a problem. And that takes us to 2017. And this is what we had in the UK as the top 10 best-selling albums in 2017. So we've got lots of Ed Sheeran and a tiny smidge of rock at the bottom in the form of Liam Gallagher. And in the US, it's a similar story. We have Ed Sheeran again, Bruno Mars, and some hip-hop, no rock music. So that's it. It seems rock music died in 2010 and it's never coming back. The end. Or maybe it's just the beginning for rock music. See, once upon a time, between roughly 1900 and 1960, there was another genre of music as the cornerstone of pop. Not rock music, but... Jazz musicians like Louis Armstrong, Frank Sinatra and Glenn Miller weren't just the biggest jazz musicians of their time, they were the biggest pop stars of their time. But then in the 1950s, this new style of music comes along with exciting electric guitars and begins to push jazz out of the charts. Jazz continued on in the charts until about the 1970s, but was slowly pushed out and became more of a niche alternative music rather than the mainstream that it was before. And it's dying. It's dying, man. And the world says, let it die. But no matter what Ryan Gosling says, jazz isn't dying and it's certainly not dead. Getting pushed out of the mainstream and becoming its own niche world of music actually did a lot of favours for jazz music. It meant that musicians like John Coltrane, Miles Davis and Herbie Hancock could take jazz to new exciting places and make it a style of music that focused on innovation and new ideas. Jazz today operates in its own little world much like classical music does with its own approaches, its own values and its own dedicated following. So maybe acoustic music, electronic music and hip hop are to rock what rock was to jazz. Maybe rock is done in the charts, but this doesn't mean that rock is going to die. Maybe rock now just becomes its own world, with its own approach to music and its own dedicated following. And this could be really good for rock music, just like in jazz, when it left the mainstream, it was able to become more progressive, more exotic. Maybe this will happen for rock music now. Maybe rock can go off and become what it's always wanted to be. To me, it seems like we're at that tipping point, where rock has only recently left the charts and could either go off and become its own thing or have some resurgence and rejoin the charts. We'll just have to wait and see. I used to say I, I'm really glad about rock for one reason, that is taught the kids where the beat is. And that, I feel that rock has done well. Now that they know where the beat is, the thing is to feel it and to do something a little less, you know, obvious with it. 